Hello, Colin Fraser here with another installment of me sharing a highly practical electronics device. Hashtag live, love, make. That's right, I'm keeping this YouTube channel laser focused. I'm an engineer by profession and apparently by hobby when the world takes away your other hobbies. So welcome to my workshop, or as I like to call it, my boy pen. Up today is a Nixie Clock. I'm working on a Nixie Clock. I've just been watching the 2015 film Tomorrowland. It took a pandemic to finally go and watch it. And I was struck not by the characters, not by the story, but by this doomsday clock that was counting down in George Clooney's laboratory. It looked like a bunch of light bulbs, and somehow magically the bulbs were changing which number was illuminated within. So for those who don't know, a Nixie tube is a device developed in the 50s for displaying numbers. It's a gas-filled glass tube with a bunch of different metal cathodes in the shapes of numbers. Depending on which one you run high voltage through, that cathode will glow. It has a very interesting look since which number you light up is in a different place in the tube at a different depth. So it kind of it has a three-dimensional feel as you see the numbers change. And while it is costly and trickier to make, that unique look has made it maintain a sort of cult following. It's really like the Rocky Horror Picture Show of numerical indicators. Now, making a vacuum-sealed tube filled with neon and mercury is not exactly maker-friendly, but with laser cutters becoming more accessible, people have been finding ways to make LED-based Nixie displays. Acrylic, or plexiglass, is actually a very good light pipe, to the point that it's actually used in plastic optical fibers. But when you etch it with a laser, light will escape through that surface and you'll get this kind of glowing effect in that spot. So if you etch a bunch of different acrylic pieces with numbers and put an LED under each of them, you can effectively make an LED-based Nixie tube. Now, lots of people have done stuff just like this, and you can check out projects like the Lixie, the Gixie, the Trixie, Hobbitses. But it looked like a fun project, and it seemed like a good way for me to just not think about electronics design, but to actually have to take into account mechanical design enclosures and fonts and optics. So I wanted to take heavy inspiration from the original Nixie tubes, and so when I started designing it, even though elements like the glass tube and the honeycomb anode don't serve any practical function, I just like the feel of them. It's easy to get lost staring at SolidWorks, feeling like you can fit so much detail when everything is blown up in front of you. And it really wasn't until I had a jar of this size in front of me that I realized how tricky it was going to be to get a 3D printer to handle these small details. Like for example, the little hat, like it sits on top of the acrylic sheets, which I was trying to make look like the H.R. McMillan Space Center, which makes an appearance in the movie Tomorrowland. The PCB that sits on the tube is fairly simple. It's just the 10 LEDs jammed together nice and tightly. Some poor sucker's gonna have to solder this by hand. <laughs> it's me. I, it's me. I have to do it. The clockboard was probably the most fun to design since it was something I was most comfortable with. It was just electronics design. So the clock needed power, which it gets through USB. It needed a real-time clock to keep accurate time. It needed some buttons so you could do things like set the time. I also wanted it to measure temperature and humidity, so there's a little MEM sensor that monitors both. The other very unnecessary thing I wanted to add was an audio peak detector, so that if you were to, for example, clap twice in quick succession, you could get it to show the temperature. Oh yeah, and most important, the microcontroller, which listens to all these different things and decides which LEDs in the tubes to turn on. So this was done in Altium, and it all went pretty smoothly. Software is pretty good at catching my mistakes. The one major design constraint, because I'm cheap, was to keep the main board under 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, since that's the size threshold for a lot of cheap PCB fabs. Now, realistically, only two tubes could fit on something of that size, and I wanted six total for my clock hours, minutes, seconds. So this is where Altium came in handy. I used variants so that I could have one PCB design, and depending on which parts I populated on it, which jumper resistors, it could either be the main center board with all of those important electronics I just talked about, or if I switch to the left or right satellite boards, there's just the connector boards and LED to show its power. I'm undecided right now whether I want to have all of them in a row in one enclosure, or whether I should have the hours, minutes, seconds on these own kind of islands. Someone with a good design sense, please tell me what to do. So that's it. Isn't design fun, where everything is ideal and possible and free? And then I made it. And as a first prototype work in progress, it's not bad. 
I wrote enough code to make it do most of the things I wanted. I haven't used an Arduino in a while, but boy, things go fast when all the low-down communication stuff is already taken care of. It tells time. You can set the time with the buttons. You can adjust the color with the buttons. And you can give it the clap and have it cycle through what it can show you. The big mistake so far was that I messed up the dimensions on the acrylic digits file. The tabs are too far, so they don't quite line up properly. And there's lots of little things to improve. I tried out an enclosure, but I don't like how big Someone it is. Looks super annoying lining up the tabs. Right, have the ten hat. digits. I the digits. still need to figure out the hardy company. I don't understand the hardy acrylic. But hey, what are problems but excuses to keep working on it? Honestly, my immediate goal is basically to, to come up with an enclosure I'm happy with so that I can at least have this sitting on my shelf and then have a second one where I can tinker on endlessly forever and never be happy with it. I'll post another video following up later on with how I, or if I, dealt with those kinks. Not a kink shame. Uh, and then I'll be posting a project called the LED Map PCB. Yay, more LEDs. Can't get enough of those LEDs. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.